going to go through the Savat grading syllabus, but I think this will be of use to you if you do any sparring. And I'm going to say stand-up sparring, percussive punch and kick sparring. Because if that's you, you need a way of knowing where the openings are on your opponent. And a good or way of analysing that is going to be of service to you when you come up against different opponents and different level of opponents. Savat so has a grading system which is very clever on this point and I thought I'd go through it with you so you can understand Savat better and maybe it helps you out with your own sparring. You may be aware that in Savat we don't have a belt system, we have a glove system. So you talk about someone being a blue glove, a green, red, white, yellow and silver without expecting them to actually wear a glove of that colour like other people wear belts. It's simply a mode of progression. But it's a competitive sport and the mode of progression helps you be better at competition. The, uh, the, the, the system is almost a psychology of the opponent and that's why I think you might be interested in it. It starts by saying, okay, welcome. You are, you are new to our sport, new to aspiring people. So let's give you the easiest type of opponent. And the easiest type of opponent is one who gives you openings. You have to do anything. If you are in front of an opponent who has a hole in their guard or they're not very good at moving yet and their leg is a target, well, you can punch or kick it. Blue Glove says, I can touch without getting touched in reply. That is, I can hit an open target and get back to my guard. Great, we can spar if the openings are given to us. Green Glove says, well, what if the opponents are a bit better than that? What if they are, that they don't give you any openings and you have to wait your turn. You have to wait for the opening because they do, let's say, drop their right hand when they throw their left or their guard goes wide when they kick or when they kick, they fall forward and, and land heavy and there's an opportunity. Green Glove says, well, there's no opening directly available, but there is one available after they've struck, so we can reply to them and hope to hit an open target. Green Glove, I am not touched, and then I touched in reply. Then I touch in reply. You spar a little longer, you get better at doing that. Red Glove then says, let's handle a more complex situation. The person in front of you doesn't leave you any openings, and they're pretty tidy, so when they finish their attack, they're also organized. You have to work for your opening by stepping off line for it. It's available after their strike, but only to the side. So I may, I may kick you and be very sharp and fast about that, but there is an opening towards my outside flank or my inside flank if you can evade the line of my attack. Now we're dealing with quite a complex situation. You've got to defend, move, and reply, but you're now dealing with a, a high level of opponent. Beyond that, the next level of difficulty up is someone who moves so well that this is not available to you. They, they don't leave an opening, they uh, are tidy enough so the opening is not there after the strike, and after the strike, if you try and step offline, maybe they follow you. But you are aware that they give you a small opening just before they strike. So if you're good at reading me, you're good at looking my eyes and my shoulders and my body, if you know when I'm about to attack, you might intercept me. Or if you're good at reading patterns and I go one, two, you know a hook is coming. Yeah, if I go one, two, you're expecting a hook, you're expecting my body weight to shift back and me to do that. If you're good, you might wait for the first two, slip the hook, hit me to the body, to the leg, but there's your anticipation of an otherwise quite tidy opponent. Then the syllabus says, let's imagine that the opponent doesn't give you any openings at all. Blue glove hands you the opening, green glove hands you the opening but at a certain time, red glove after a certain time and space, and white glove at a certain moment. It takes a lot of sharpness and skill to do that. Yellow glove says, well, Let's handle any opponent now. Let's handle any opponent because we are able to create our own openings. We can create openings by perturbing an opponent. 
you know, striking one place to hit in another, or maybe we faint, we faint someone out of position and hit them. Um, maybe we bait them, force them to overextend and then counter them. Yellow glove, you will see, requires all of the previous skills. You need to be able to hit an open target, counter a target, step off line sometimes, and anticipate. So yellow glove, that's where sparring's at. If you can do yellow glove, you are master of the sport and you're handled psychologically with the timing and with the understanding of space, all of the opponents that have come so far. Yellow glove, we say you're complete. There's a level above that, which is silver glove, which distinguishes the expert boxer from merely someone who's capable of doing all of these things. So we have silver glove as the, the highest technical grade. What else can we say about the the syllabus. In a way, you have uh, four grades, the so-called coloured grades, blue, green, red and white, in which you do something uh, that takes advantage of an opening left by your opponent. You exploit their mistakes and in yellow glove you, you create their mistakes, you force an error from them. So there's a psychological distinction between the first four and the fifth. Most of them, you'll notice, are dealing with the opponent's attack. So a lot of the time you're getting taught how to handle differing skill levels and different types of opponent. But even once you've completed it, you will still find, even in a highest level encounter, that sometimes the opportunity is just presented to you. And sometimes it's presented after the attack, sometimes to the side, sometimes before, and sometimes you have to create. So you're always using all of your skills. It gives you a good way in club sparring for um, mixing in the right circles, mixing the right people together because uh, a blue glove student can be sparring with a white glove student but that white glove student knows only to offer open targets to your beginner essentially and so on across all of the, the levels. If we know where we're at we know how to spar properly and you've got a way that you can remember forever of dissecting and understanding every type of opponent you deal with and eventually at yellow glove level controlling them. That was just a quick rundown so that you have my opinion and a way of looking at the syllabus in Savat. The I can give you a link to the syllabus itself and you will see that it's got all of these longer phrases I touch and I'm not touched in reply, I touch before I'm touched etc but I thought I'd break it down for you if you find those I don't know hard to uh, hard to interpret in terms of where the opening is on your opponent and I hope I've done that for you today. Let's return to this topic because I think understanding how you progress in a sparring sport where ultimately you're learning how to deal with a very chaotic and freeform encounter is one of the more interesting skills you can learn so we'll definitely come back to this in, uh, in future videos. For now if you've enjoyed it please like comment, share, send this to someone who might be interested in Savat or someone you know who's struggling with their sparring or could be inspired by anything here. Otherwise, see you next time.